Paso a Paso <laughs> Podcast. Hello. Hey, welcome to the latest edition of the Paso a Paso Early Childhood Podcast, otherwise known as Paso a Podcast by us lovingly here in Taos, New Mexico. We have a wonderful guest today, um, and I will allow Paula to introduce herself. Paula, how are you today? Hi, Miles. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Thanks for being here. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and let people know um, what sort of work you do in town or, or who you're with that we'll be talking about today? Wonderful. Um, my name is Paula Oksovi Hayat. I have the best job. I work at um, with the Taos Municipal Schools. I'm the community school coordinator for Enos Garcia. And what that means is that um, we work here at the school to make sure that our kids and our families have everything they need in order to be able to be successful academically and also in life. That's huge. And um, for those that aren't as aware of uh, the school, what are the grades that the school serves here in Taos? So Inos Garcia is a um, bilingual school and we have K through um, fifth grade and we also have a free pre-K program. Great. And it's a it's a public school and not necessarily a charter, correct? That's correct. It's a public school. And um, when you, I loved hearing your explanation about community schools and what that means, but when you think about and have experience now for, um, have you been on the job for about a year so far? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking after your first year, um, things obviously are, are um, you know, difficult for everyone uh, related to COVID. But um, in general, when you think about community schools, what are some examples um, of, of things that you and the staff either envisioned um, for taking the school where it was to where it is now or where it's headed uh, that would give people a better sense for what a community school change can look like um, as an example at Enos Garcia? Mm -hmm. So with commu a community school is a strategy, right? It's a strategy to, to help our students thrive and our families thrive. So um, in the community school model, it is very, very important to make sure that we understand those needs. So at the school, that looks like an annual needs assessment that we do with the parents where we ask, hey, how's it going? What do you need? What are your priorities in terms of those needs? How can we support you? How can we help you? And then we bring that information to the school. I am so lucky to have an amazing council who works with me. I bring that data to the council and together we decide how we're going to move forward in order to address those needs. Now, the council is made up with, uh, you know, we have parents in the council, we have teachers, administration um, staff, we have, and, and people from other organizations in Taos who give us great um, perspective on how to tackle these this challenges because we cannot do it alone. And, and you know, we are, get, we are very enriched when we have more people from different backgrounds joining our council. So, for instance, um, last year that meant that we started an after-school program here at the school because that was very important to parents. That was their number one priority last year. Um, we also had, you know, some parents were struggling with food um, security. So we had, we partnered with uh, St. James and we had a backpack program here at Enos where kids will take home some extra food every Thursday um, home, kind of like to get them, you know, through the, the, um, the weekend. Um, then, as I said, we have a great, we had a great um, after school program that it was growing and growing. And then unfortunately, uh, in by March, we have to shut everything down, like everything did get shut down. We also yeah. have a, a clothing bank for, you know, kids who needed some extra clothes and parents maybe couldn't buy them. Um, so it we were like looking, looking at not just a student, but really yeah. looking at the whole child. Amazing. Uh, that sounds like a lot to have implemented during the first year. Do you feel good about what, what was done during that time? Yeah, I think it gave us, it, you're right, it was a lot of work, and but it was needed, it was the right kind of work, and it really 
help us um, for the second year to, to know, you know, what we need to do, what can we improve. The, the fact that we were able to try some things last year was was very positive. And now for this year, as parents came to Enos last week to pick up the devices for their kids, we use that opportunity, which it could be, you know, who knows, right? But it could be maybe our only opportunity to see the parents face to face. So we um, implemented a survey again, asking them because, you know, from a year to now, things have changed a lot. And we also always want to be um, aware of, of changing needs. So we, we gave parents a survey. We're asking them questions like, again, how can we support you? What do you need? We're asking questions about how COVID has impacted their lives. We want to know that. Um, we also want to know if they want to be part of our of our council because we really need parent um, voices represented. We ask them, you know, who's going to be home with the kids when they do work? Do they need a computer? Do they have internet? Uh, do they need any help creating a learning space for their students? We're really trying to be, you know, mindful in, in, in the questions that we ask um, so that we can support our families better. Yeah, I think it's a great idea to use that opportunity, as you mentioned, to interact uh, with the parents because it is hard to know what the rest of the school year will look like. Do you have any sense so far of whether the things that the parents reported um, they may uh, benefit from some support for have changed um, compared to last year yet? Of course, because now families are put in a position where they have to be almost like a, you know, a teacher assistant at home, right? Like um, the kids are going to be at least, let's just say until Labor Day, which is what we know for sure, they're going to be in front of the computer. So they're going to, especially maybe the little ones that are going to need help with login, they don't read yet. So, right. you know, wh where do I log in? Where do I find my assignment? Where do I find the videos from my teacher? How do I connect with my teacher? So what we've noticed is that in some grades, and this is very preliminary, I, I only had the opportunity to barely look at the data, but for instance, in kindergarten, about f half, you know, 50% of our kindergartners are going to be supported by grandparents. You know, the grandparents are going to be the ones sitting with them. So we know that we need to support the grandparents so that they understand the technology so that they can support th that student. Yeah. So that's one of the the, um, the highlights, you know, that, we, um, that we're that we looking at as, as we look at some patterns in, with the data. But um, it's exciting. We'll see what we're going to do with that. We'll probably, you know, create some classes for parents, some video tutorials in in and make sure that they feel competent and they can really support support the student. It's, this is a very interesting time. You know, parents were always, or they were always meant to be partners with teachers because we know that when, when teachers and families work together, it just benefits the, the child, you know. Yeah. And, and this situation, as, as stressful as it can be, is really highlighting that, that the, the families we really need to partner with them. They have to be active supporting their child so that they can get through these, these times, right, with this remote learning or even when, you know, if at some point we have the hybrid model as well. Right. I mean, listening to all your sharing and um, the holistic approach, as you mentioned, and the ways in which all the things that you're helping the school do uh, in order to help and, and connect with parents – sounds and feels so important and so right and so necessary to make, um, especially times like this, maybe uh, transition smoother. Um, at the same time, as you know, it, it seems as though there's a lot of budget issues in the state and the county and things like that. And um, I, I guess what I'm, what I'm just bringing up is the idea that I, f I feel as though the community school model and having people that are in your sorts of roles in schools in our, in our, our region and beyond is um, – kind of more important than ever. Um, and I'm just hoping that that support for those roles and that vision continues because it, it does sound as though someone needs to be in that role and to, to bring all these various uh, parties together, especially when there's so many other things now that uh, teachers and, and other staff have to focus on. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, that was my, my thought too, right? We, we wrote this implementation grant and we were so lucky we were awarded the implementation grant, which means funding for this um, strategy. Um, and at some point, you know, we, you know that we had a special um, um, 
budget session, legislative session in June, and everybody knew that there were going to be some some cuts there. But fortunately, I think you know our um, state government agrees with us, right? And they see the value of the community schools, especially now, especially in these challenging times. So um, they were able to honor the the funding that was. Um, you know, awarded through through the through the grant, but it's never enough, right? Because the, I mean, it's, it's wonderful, but the need is always so big, and we rely a lot on those amazing, you know, volunteers and people who give us donations. And actually, we received a lot of school supplies donations, so we were able to provide that to our students when they picked up their devices this year. Um, it was not every item in on the list. But we felt like, okay, this can help some. And we, we told our parents, if you are struggling with school supplies, please, you know, let us know and we can help. So it's, you know, we, we rely a lot in our own community as well, as I yeah. said, with volunteers and with donations, uh, because it, it takes a whole village. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it, it's a good segue to... Um I'm curious about discussing, uh, you know, for parents out there, Paso a Paso is an organization that, uh, a network of organizations that support uh, children and families in our community, largely focused on early childhood, but also through, through the school age. And um, in what ways can uh, parents or their kids and the general community both get involved in and support the work you and, and the, the school at Enos Garcia are involved in? Uh, definitely through participating in, in our in our council. That is the the place where where families can voice their opinions, voice their concerns, and and decisions are made at that council. You know, so it's very important. I invited the parents at the school to um, to participate because it, it's crucial. This is their school. This is you know their kids and and their future. So the community school will take the shape and form of what their the stakeholders will, will give it, right? So it, it's very important that people participate. And then, of course, we are always reaching out to the community for donations. I, I still remember that, I think it was a Monday, March 13th, when we knew we closed the school the Friday before we were going into sp- spring break, but we had the feeling that we were not coming back. And I just, you know, put some Facebook notifications and, and, and people show up that Monday and we ha- we were able to um, get 100 boxes of food that we were able to distribute to people, you know, to our students just to get us through the time when the breakfast and lunches from the district, which was very fast and they, they reacted very quickly. But there was still a little gap of time that we were worried about our students and we just put the call out to the community and our community is amazing. And people just donated a bunch of food. We were able to pack those boxes full of food and, and bring them to 100 families in one day. So, you know, it's those are the main ways, I think, participating in the council and just, um, you know, whenever we put the, the help uh, message out there, if people can help, we, we can definitely use everything that is out there great well uh thanks so much for um sharing all that you do we have about a minute and a half left um real quickly what would be the best way that if people wanted to join that council and get involved or reach out to you to learn more uh, that they could do that well they can you know i can give you my cell phone people can text me or call me it's um 575-770-6564 or they can also call the school at 737-6070. My email is super long. I'm not going to, it's going to take five minutes, not one and a half. So I think that the best way is just to, you know, pick up the phone or shoot me a text or call the school and, 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 you know, that, that's, that's the best way to get in touch with us. And the school's website um, for the whole district is tauschools.org. Yes, that's right. If people would like, they could also send an email to pasotaus at gmail, and I'd be happy to provide them with your email address. Um, real quickly, um, what role do you think uh, or benefit there is to uh, PASO and kind of organizations working together in our last 30 seconds here? Well, you know, PASO is just an amazing organization. It started like, probably 20 years ago, I think, and, and it, PASO brings people from different agencies together. It's such a great opportunity to, you know, brainstorm to and to see very, the big picture, right? Because you have different organizations 
um, I think it is we're so lucky to to have an organization like like Paso really. No no not every community has one, and many communities are looking at Taos and using us as a model uh, because uh, it's quite extraordinary the, the work that they do.